Hey. <laughs> Happy Friday, guys. I, did you get a lovely shot of my, you know, my backyard with all the dead grass? Hey, lady. Um, yeah, my phone was being a little slow. Yay, it's been a while. I know. Oh, thank you, cute hair. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm actually cutting it all off tomorrow. Gotta get, I gotta, gotta get rid of it. It's making me crazy. How's it going, everybody? Happy Friday. Hi from California. Hey, hey. Hey, everybody saying hello. Thanks for all the hearts. I missed you guys. Um, as you know, if you've been following me on Instagram or my email list, um, things are crazy. We um, are in the process of selling our house. And so um, really that's where my focus has been, but I missed you guys. Um, didn't do a Periscope last week, but I'm excited to be back with you. So I'm glad that you guys were all able to come. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Trisha. My website is called Eat Your Beats and I help food photographers and food bloggers get the knowledge they need to capture amazing shots. Um, I'm so glad you guys are all here. If you have anybody that you think would really um, want to watch this Periscope today, feel free to share it out. Thank you so much for sharing. How did my live class go? Oh, it's not yet. It's not until um, later. It's the, uh, the 19th of March locally in Omaha. Yeah. Um, so I'm really, <laughs> Wilco, hey buddy. So I'm really excited that you guys are here and thank you so much for sharing. Um, so I just saw recently that the March issue of Bon Appetit magazine was shot with smartphones and that was really exciting to me um, because when I first started my Instagram feed, that was the only thing that I shared. Um, yeah, yeah, check it out. I looked for it on newsstands today. I couldn't find it yet. Um, Maybe just hasn't hit. It's the March issue, so I would think it would already be out. Uh, but take a look. Um, you can look online if you want. Um, it's got a picture of a pizza and a phone taking a picture of the pizza. Very cool. Um, so yeah, when I first started my Instagram journey, I did not share DSLR pictures on Instagram at all. And actually, uh, my iPhone pictures were, oh, it's a Bon Appetit magazine. That's the, that's the magazine. Um, so when I first started Instagram, all my pictures were iPhone and you got it at the store. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely like check that out, go and look through the whole thing. I also really loved reading the, um, the thoughts of the photographers who actually shot the issue. Um, and like what they thought when they realized they were going to have to be shooting with iPhones and not their cameras. Um, so, you know, I think just like anything, it's another creative tool to stretch your imagination and your creativity. Today, I'm gonna to give you four super quick tips um, on how to take better pictures using your iPhone. And, oop, I've done something crazy here. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna run through the tips that I can give you guys today. And I'm using my husband's phone. Yes, love shooting with the iPhone. Me too, actually. Um, and I take quite a few pictures with my iPhone. Um, best topic ever. Good, hooray, I'm so glad. So actually, let me tell you guys, I have been talking about iPhone food photography for quite a while, um, but I just stopped because I really wanted to kind of focus on um, you know, my DSLR photography, but I have written several posts um, that I can link to whenever I post this back for you guys on my blog, as well as um, I do have a section on Instagram in my ebook, Eat Pretty Things. So just a couple of things for you guys to keep in mind. Okay, so tip number one, I do have a little setup back here. Um, I don't have fantastic lighting where I am, so I'll probably actually um, move this whenever I take my shots to actually share on Instagram for you guys. But my first um, and biggest, most important thing for you guys to think about, tip number one, when you are shooting with your iPhone, um, natural light is key. That is gonna be the best way that you can get the most accurate colors, the most accurate white balance, and the brightest images. Now, you do also have to be careful of overexposing and underexposing your image, but I don't know if you guys know, but when you're in your actual camera app, you can tap and it will change exposure based on the spots that you are tapping on. So it gives you like a little, little sunshine and it tries to, um, hello, hello, hi. It tries to adjust that exposure for you so that you're gonna get the best exposure um, that you need to take your image. So that's tip number one, find great natural light. Now, a lot of people ask me about shooting in restaurants. Um, I typically don't shoot a lot of pictures in restaurants because it irritates my family, but if you do, if I'm going to a restaurant and I want to take pictures, um, I, I try to look for a window, right? Because windows are going to give you the best, most natural, most neutral light. Um, when you're dealing with overhead lighting, you know, you've got to combat the fluorescent or the tungsten light bulbs. They can cast colors. So just avoid that. So natural light if you need to. Now, secondly, 
Yep, stand on your chair. I don't do that in restaurants. You're bold. Uh, oh, I have, I have done that in a restaurant, but, but there was nobody else there. <laughs> um, so, um, so basically, if you do, if you're shooting in a in an area where you don't have as much natural light as you want, don't be afraid to pull out a reflector. And maybe that's going to be like an actual reflector. Maybe it's just a piece of foam board, or um, maybe it's just a menu, right? If they have white menus, don't be afraid to sort of put you know, bounce that natural light back in wherever you think it's gonna be best, wherever you're gonna be able to um, best get the best exposure for your image. Again, as I mentioned, you do have the option to switch your exposure on your phone based on where you're tapping. So um, you guys try that out as well. Okay, so next, now that you're taking a picture with your iPhone, tip number two. Think of rules of composition. Your iPhone is no different than any other image you would be taking. So think about, you know, rule of thirds, um, you know, ways that you can add movement into your, um, into your image. I have a mini reflector. Oh, that's a great thing. I haven't heard of that. Does it just fit in your bag? Like your, your purse? I, I don't, if I started bringing a reflector with me, my husband might murder me. <laughs> Not really. I don't mean that really. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so um, definitely if that's a great reflector, um, check that out as Silver Lily Moon just mentioned. Um, I haven't heard of that. So it's a tiny little reflector you can fold and put in your pocket. That's great. Um, so rules of composition, make sure that you're taking time to make your image look interesting. Um, the, the thing about iPhone photography is that you don't have the luxury of having a depth of field, um, which means, you know, the front, front thing is in focus and you've got this nice creamy blurry background. So because of that, you kind of have to work extra hard. So use some of those tips, um, especially that I talk about in my ebook. So, um, using color, right? Contrasting color, um, complementary colors, using movement, whether that be in the actual food or in the linens or you know in the in the placing of wherever you're putting things um, make sure that you know you're thinking about creative ways rule of thirds maybe you leave um, a lot of um, negative space and then your subject is on one uh, one side of the of the frame so just start getting creative with the ways that you can compose a shot because composition is so important when you're shooting with an iPhone because that's really gonna draw that interest in and um, give you an exciting image. So next, tip number three. Get the right angle. So this is especially important. As I mentioned a minute ago, you don't have that depth of field that you have with a camera. So when I'm shooting with an iPhone, I do one of two things. Either I take a completely aerial photograph where I'm completely over the top of the image, or I'm going to take an image where I am completely parallel with whatever I'm shooting that's going to be in front of me. But typically, aerial is going to be the best way for you to um, capture that image. So again, you're not going to have the depth of field, but you're creating interest. Um, thanks. You're creating interest by using composition, right? And those rules of photography that we talk about. Okay, so tip number four. I'm flying through these so that I can get to you guys' questions. Um, but tip number four, filters. So I'm a big fan of using filters. Yes, that's true. We'll talk about that in a second too. So I'm a big fan of using filters because I want my image to have um, very natural looking white balance. Um, I have issues with trying to do horizontal, not overhead. With, so like taking a picture like this, heartbeat kitchen. You mean taking a picture like this, straight up and down? Horizontal is like this. I think that's what she meant. So again, what, what I was going to say is when you're taking your picture, no, I'll wait for her to finish that thought because that I, I want to I wanna be able to answer that one. It, it is really hard because you'll notice that even your iPhone camera is going to give some curvature to your lens, especially if you have a lot of lines. Like if you find a brick wall, that is the kiss of death. Um, because that is going to give you all those horizons that you're going to try to correct. If I'm trying to shoot from not overhead, so side angle, right? Okay. So I think you mean like, um, like maybe like this or like that. Yeah. What 365 said, I missed it. I'm sorry. Um, but basically it's really hard to get anything other than like a straight up and down or aerial. Um, I typically don't even try. You can choose your focal point with your iPhone simply by tapping. Um, again, as I talked about a minute ago, you can tap and focus in on something um, and it'll give you a little bit of blur, but not very much. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, good. I answered that. Just tuned in. Yes, I will definitely. So um, Amanda just asked, yes, this will be available 24 hours um, after this broadcast. Thanks for all the hearts. 
<laughs> this will be available for 24 hours on Periscope. And then after that, I'll be putting it um, on my website uh, with a few more tips and some images to help you guys. Um, so, okay. White balance, that's my biggest tip for you when you are using filters. Correct your white balance. Um, and you can do this by adjusting your exposure, um, by adjusting your temperature, that's going to add the blue or the orange or yellow, or adjusting your temp, oh sorry, tent, and tent is going to change the, um, the green or pink. So I usually take those uh, those three things and try to get the best white balance that I can. I don't worry as much about overexposed images with my iPhone because um, I know I'm limited you know, by what I can shoot and what I can capture anyway. So if I have an image that's slightly overexposed, it's not gonna ruin my day, um, but I just try to do the best I can. Horizon, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you're taking an image that has sharp lines in it, um, like maybe a, a cookie sheet or a wall, a brick wall, as I mentioned earlier, use um, those angles. So you have this in the Visco app as well as the Instagram app. You can change your horizon. So you can tilt the vertical and the horizontal horizon and you can rotate. What about manual camera apps? Yep, so I just use my camera straight away. Um, I use the camera app for my iPhone, and once I have taken my picture, I don't do any editing in that. I edit everything either in Visco or Instagram. Yep, yeah, so I take my picture here. Yes, you're welcome. I take my picture here, and then I send it straight to Visco, and that's where I do all of those corrections, like white balance, temperature and tent, exposure, if I wanna saturate any colors, and then correcting my horizon. That's a biggie for me. Um, and then your colors. Don't be afraid to really pop those colors um, if you want them to show. And I do have some really great picture examples where I can show you um, where I, create, um, I corrected some white balance. Yep, Rainy Day Bites says she edits everything in Instagram. That's true, you can definitely do that. Um, Instagram has been fantastic about their updates uh, where they now have given us the options to do better edits. Um, do you like Visco or Snapseed better? Personally, I use Visco. Um, it's just what I'm comfortable with using. For a long time, I used Snapseed. Snapseed does, um, have something that I prefer, which is selective uh, color adjustments or highlights. So you can selectively choose areas that you wanna highlight, um, but I typically just do everything in Visco. So, okay, those were my four tips. I'm just gonna give them to you real quick one more time. Tip number one, I will, yep, explain more about adjusting the horizon, I will, yep. So tip number one, natural light, find a window. This is gonna be key to getting a fantastic shot. Turn off any overhead lights. If you're in a restaurant and it has a bulb hanging down on the table, you know, sometimes I'll try to like move the bulb to the side or kind of uh, shadow it with my hand. Natural light, tip number one. Tip number two, rules of composition. Create an interesting image. This is gonna be your ticket to creating an image that gets noticed and gets people's attention. Tip number three, um, tip number three, get the right angle. As I mentioned, I typically only shoot aerial, um, and once I have a wonky horizon, I try to fix it um, in an in a editing app. And then tip number four, finding great filters that make your images look as true to natural life and as true to natural light as you can get. So somebody just asked me um, about how do I correct horizon. So um, if you go into your Instagram app, there's actually a place where the first option that you have is to rotate your image, and you guys can do this later when you're not watching it on your phone, um, but yes, thank you. Thank you, Parish Lane. You're fantastic. Uh, you're, I'm gonna get you to help me on all my periscopes. Um, so the first thing that you can do is adjust your rotation. So when you're editing your image, it's gonna allow you to you know, change like this. So like say you have a straight line. Done and done. Say you have a straight line. Um, like a tabletop. I can share example images of this. Say you have a tabletop. You're gonna rotate that this direction, right? To see if you can get it close enough to being a straight line. Then the next two options that you have for correcting horizon, you have vertical correction and horizontal correction. So this is gonna be the exact same things that you would do, thank you. These two things are gonna be the exact same things that you would do if you were editing in Lightroom and editing your horizon in Lightroom. So you have the option for vertical correction, which brings your image closer to the front or closer on the bottom, right, until you get that perfect line, or you have horizontal correction, so it's gonna turn your image this way 
or this way, right? So those are the three things that I do to correct my horizon. And if you have a lot of lines, let's say you have a brick wall and you're trying to um, correct the horizon in the brick wall, the best thing to do is go with the line that you notice the most. Go to the line and correct the line that stands out to your eye the most. So maybe that's the horizon, like maybe it's a table, um, maybe it's the bottom of a brick wall, um, because you're never gonna be able to correct all of those lines because one, depending on how you shot the actual image, and two, depending upon how much curvature the lens on your um, smartphone has. So those are my four tips um, given back to you. Do you guys have any questions? I'll just take a few minutes for questions because I don't like to keep these long. Thanks for all the hearts. I'm excited to see you guys. Yes, I do that with wooden boards, exactly. I do that, if I shoot on something that looks like wooden planks, um, I'm super picky about my uh, lines. Yeah, no problem, that was a, I, that's one of my favorite tips. <sighs> Anything else? I'm excited to see you guys, and I'll be back next week with another Periscope as well. Um, okay, if there's no more questions, I wanna say thank you guys so much. Um, if you're on my email list, I'm gonna be sending out details about my new ebook shot in the dark. Um, my ebook is all about low light and dramatic light food photography and it's finally finished. Yay, I'm so excited. My name of my blog, thank you. The name of my blog is called Eat Your Beats. That's the name of my blog. If you wanna find me on social media, I'm Go Eat Your Beats. Um, Eat Your Beats was taken. <laughs> That's what happens. Um, but anyways, thanks so much for coming. I loved seeing you guys. Don't miss my email list because I'm definitely gonna be sending out details about my new ebook. So I'm really excited. And thank you. Thanks guys for coming. And I will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye.